the audio echoes. Okay. Okay, uh, hello everyone again for the record. I am, I guess that now the microphone is much better. Shamil, you tell me, okay, thank you so much. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to today's uh, career session, the first career session of week five. And we are going to be talking about something that different people kept uh, bringing up during the uh, during the session with Aaron, the hot seat, your, I believe everyone uh, was actually present because it was a fun, fun session. And different people, he kept talking about uh, how being a professional in a professional setup in everything you are doing, you evolve or you grow or you become creative from the quality of questions you ask or even asking questions, that's another step. So asking question is first thing, and then asking quality questions is another thing, especially in work setups where, are, where there are so many people who have higher experiences than you, it's most of the time like we have to think and rethink the questions that we're going to be asking, why? Because first of all, uh, like generally talking generally, not talking about how it fosters understanding and everything that we're going to be seeing here, but because you do not want to sound like you are asking cheap questions. Can I call them like cheap questions? Or you are asking because you were not present, like you are asking questions like an absent person. It's not like a good reputation having that kind of image. I will give you a quick example from our 10 Academy perspective. When we were starting, or even now, there are still people who are asking like, where is the, uh, what's the next session? We haven't seen the schedule for this week. But to be honest, the schedule was actually shared in different channels. So how do you make sure that you are not perceived as someone who, do, who is not active or who do not make his research before asking questions and be able to ask the right questions? That's like a very small example, but in a workplace, it's taken as a very big thing. It's taken as a big thing. It also, it's not like it comes in a negative way only, also in a positive way that is a certain point where you ask a question and it raises discussion, it raises like a debate, it raises creativity, like your question might bring up a lot of things, a lot of benefits. You might remind them something they completely forgot about or a certain project that is going on. So most of the time, asking quality questions is good to show that you are active. It's also good to show everything that we are actually going to be, to be seeing here. But that's like the main, main uh, purpose or sole purpose of this session. And it's going to be engaging, like very, very much engaging. And I would highly appreciate if you engage yourself as well. It's easy to understand. We just have to think like quickly and answer the questions. So yeah, I believe we are ready to go through the session, but to ensure that we are on the same page, can I have some reactions? Like, are we ready to get started? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the reaction. Okay, let's roll. So the very first question I have, um, remember, when was the last time you asked a question and you felt like it is welcomed? appreciated and also made an impact oh it, it doesn't have to make an impact it can be welcomed and appreciated and made an impact but it can also be welcomed and just appreciated what made you feel like that 
in my context, I will give you an example. In my context, when I ask something and someone says, oh, like what we are seeing here on the screen, that's an excellent question. Oh, like, oh, that's a good question. I feel like, you know, I should be giving myself some kudos <laughs> because I asked like a very good question in their perspective, you know? So in your perspective or in your experience so far, when did you ask a question and you felt like you are welcomed and appreciated and probably even made an impact further? So what made you feel that? You do not have to tell us the scenario, but what made you feel like that was a really solid question you asked? Anyone? Or do we share the same experience? Like when someone tells you that's a good question, that's an excellent question, anything? Anything? Okay, this is so super. Enoch, thank you so much. When other people add to the question you asked, like they have, they, they put like plus one emojis, you know, plus one. I also have this question. That's a good one. Thanks, Enoch. Any one more person? Anyone? Should we give it like five seconds? Okay, so we continue for now. Uh, but, but absolutely, like also Enoch said, when someone add up to your question, you feel like, ah, oh, yeah, I thought this before you. <laughs> so you give yourself some, you know, you tap yourself on the shoulder and be like, you know, that was a good one. I really thought it through. But why is it important? Why is it really, really important? It's because this drives discovery and innovation big time a lot of discoveries a lot of innovations comes from questioning something questioning something just raising that one question and it becomes something that is so huge and then number two to foster deeper understanding just in case you want to clarify anything you want to i mean to ask anything or to clarify anything and also it enhances engagement and collaboration that's how people engage when you are raising questions and having discussions and challenging each other's thinking. It raises engagement and collaboration in a workspace. So let's put it in categories of the kind of questions we are going to be seeing as we progress in the session. The number one is the open-ended questions. They explore the ideas and thoughts. You are making someone think when you ask this question, you are making them think about it. Number two, closed-ended, confirm specific yes or no answers, like asking, do we have a meeting today because I'm not seeing it on my schedule? That's a straight no or yes answer. Probing questions, they dig deeper into details, into details. For instance, there is a project you are supposed to be working on and you are with a team and you are not provided with sufficient information and you want to ask for more details. So you formulate your questions, not in an open-ended manner, not in a yes, no questions, but in a detailed way. You ask every single thing you want to ask, and then you leave, you leave it to them to provide you open-ended answers or even closed-ended answers. And number four is the clarifying questions. You are seeking understanding or removing ambiguity. Seeking understanding or removing ambiguity. So while crafting your effective questions, you should be clear and concise. You should avoid leading or loading questions. Like you are asking so many things that you probably can even find by yourself. So that's not also a good practice in our workplace. Number three, use appropriate language on the tone because it's a corporate world. Of course, we have to be professional. Number four, contextualize the question that aligns with your goal. 
be able to explain why you are asking, especially when you are talking to a senior person or someone who is uh, not even a senior person, even someone with the same kind of management level with you, you should be able to ask them a question and add a why. You know, I, you know, can you tell me this and that? Because I'm having this kind of blocker ETC. Like you should be able to ask a question that actually have a goal. You have something you want to know. You are not just asking for the sake of asking. And trust me, actually there are people who just ask for the sake of asking because they just like to put their name there, which is not okay, uh, which is not a good practice in many environments. So let's go to different scenarios. This is where I'm highly going to be needing your interactions because these are scenarios, seven scenarios that can ha happen in your employee journey in a certain company where you have to engage yourself, ask questions in different ways. So the very first number one is through the onboarding. You are joining a new company. You are starting your journey in that company. That means you are new to the company and you are being introduced to your team and the projects that you are going to be working on. That's what happens when you are in the onboarding. So the type of questions you ask, they should be open-ended and clarifying because you need to understand each and everything. They don't have to be close-ended because if someone gives you just a yes or a no, you won't be able to know why they responded you with a yes. Why was it not a no? So it should be open-ended and clarifying. Number three, on what to consider, your question should show engagement and willingness to learn. You want to get engaged, you are asking about what's the current projects that are going, going, going on, what any questions, but it should be showing that you want to be engaged or you are willing to learn. Something might be out of your scope, but you are willing to learn, you know? And then when to ask, you should be asking in initial meetings with your team or one-on-one -on -one sessions with your manager. This is when someone is actually, this is when you are, it's a good time for you to hear someone speak because if you are, have like a very big question and you want like an exposed answer, so putting it on Slack might not be, you might not get the results you want because no one wants to give you paragraphs trying to explain. But if you did it in meetings with your team or in your, with your manager, then you might be able to get a broader answer that you are looking for. So I will give you on the examples, I'll be giving one question, the very first question that you can ask during onboarding, and then you can engage yourself by giving me the second and the third one. I really hope we do this. So the number one is, could you explain the team's current projects and my role within them? You know, could you explain the team's current projects and my role within them? So thinking, this is the very first question um, I would ask after they have onboarded me on different tools that we use on the team, like on everything basic. I would go ahead and then ask, like, what are the current projects then? What do you want my role to be in here? So if it was you and you're joining another team, a new team, what questions would you ask? You can raise your hand, you can type in the chat box, everything is welcomed. Anyone? Yes, Shamil? So I, I would probably ask, uh, about the current tech stacks, if it is actually uh, a, a tech company I joined. So uh, what other tools I should be learning to enhance my productivity to deliver the work in, on the actual work? Absolutely. I will agree on the first question and a bit dubbed the second question. 
the first question, the tech stacks that they use within the company, that's a very important one. But the second question, also, we try to imagine the scenario. You are being onboarded. You just got hired. You received the offer. So are you going to be asking them, like, other tools you have to learn? Because they are actually hiring you to get your time, like, um, nine to five, where you have to work for them. And they are not expecting you to be having other side skill courses or anything you're trying to learn. So it's, it, that question can be asked in the middle of your period at a company, but not when you are joining the company. So we have to also get like the context. You are new, they expect that you actually know a lot. So when you try to ask what you have to learn, you will sound like an intern. But when you're joining on an associate and manager management level, you have to ask like questions that leads you to work specifically like you have to start working yeah but thank you so much for sharing anyone else to give us examples then we discuss yes martin um since uh, we're joining at a uh, the major level could you ask a question like uh, what what are the company goals that they would like to achieve for the year uh, you know something like that and then how do they plan to achieve these goals? Um, yeah, I'm thinking something like that as well. Absolutely, that would be a very good question. That, that would be a question to ask your manager so that you understand where the work of your team stands. You know, they have these goals. That way you understand that everything you are going to be doing, you're contributing to the team, but also to the overall company goals. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Then we move forward. So after you have been onboarded, there is something that happens that, that we call coffee charts. Some people call it coffee charts. Other call it, um, there is this other name. Um, some other people call it late discussions or Friday late discussions, FLD. You will hear it in different companies. FLD, like Friday late conversation. Majority of the companies, tech companies that works remotely, you will find that Fridays, they leave it on nothing technical meeting, like no work meeting. You can just have coffee chats with people. You have to work with yourself individually on what you have to work on, but no meeting, no stand up, no project meeting, no team meeting, no nothing, but just coffee chats. So in coffee chats, this is where you meet with your colleagues from other department or even on your department or even a mentor you were given by the company to learn about other parts of the business. You have been onboarded and actually this is a practice that many people have to do when you have been onboarded. It's better to get to know other people within the company and what they are doing. So this is kind of the second thing you would do as you still have not received so many workloads on your table. So what are the kind of questions do we ask in coffee chats? It's open-ended and also explanatory. Expl exploratory, where you are trying to explore what other departments are up to. And then what to consider is that your questions should be respectful and show genuine interest. They shouldn't be raising debates and you trying to, uh, to disagree on different things. You can challenge them, but respectfully. Remember, they are in that department and you are not, you know. So we have to ask the questions respectfully and, of course, try to show genuine interest. They do not have to say something and you laugh, uh, you know, kind of something that is not professional but show genuine interest in knowing, ask a question after question and show that you are actually willing to know more. And then when to ask, it's during these informal meetings or during coffee chats, only that time. Informal meetings, that means uh, there are like people who do Kahoot, companies that do Kahoot days. Kahoot is a platform for games where it's just games and people chatting and people go in breakout rooms just to have casual conversations. So that is only the only time you are allowed to ask that question or scheduled coffee chats with the person that you scheduled that 
COVID chat with, you know? But you cannot go on Slack and text like, oh, so tell me, what are you up to in that department? It wouldn't sound like, it would sound so off. I hope you get me. It would sound so off. If you want to talk about what they are doing in another department, and of course you are not their manager, you are not the CEO, you are not a, you are just another colleague, it's better to do it in an informal meeting. And then examples of questions that I can ask, um, I can ask like, can you share insight about the projects yet that your department is currently working on? You know, for instance, you, for you, you are in data engineering and the the colleague on the coffee chat is in um how can, in the ai developers so you want to know what are you up to you know because you do not meet regularly as two departments what are you working on and so they will be able to share you know so let's go ahead what other questions can you ask when you meet this person <clears throat> Bethlehem said, oh, that's, yeah, that's straight. That's like a very open one. How is work? How is work on your side? Yeah, that would be great for checking up on them. Another one, open-ended. what is your work and education background absolutely that is very very great you are trying to explore what may, what led them into that position thank you for sharing uh bethlehem and yabez so scenario number three so now you are kind of a regular in the company you've been there for almost two weeks now and you are being tasked with different projects so the description, you are assigned to lead a project with various stakeholders and cross-functional team members involved. So it's not just a project you have to complete. You have other people, various stakeholders. They might be even customers or some people from outside the company. And also you have different cross-functional team members that are involved. So what are the type of questions? They should be strategic and they should be open-ended strategic in a it just why because there are so many cross-functional people involved and there are so many stakeholders involved and you do not know their background so on this level as you are leading a project this is kind of like a high level opportunity or high level task for you so always go for strategic and open-ended questions like no small talks it has to be strategic and open-ended so what do we have to consider understanding um objectives clearly of the project so that you know what you are working against and then go to the stakeholders expectations what are they expecting so knowing the objectives and knowing the expectations is kind of two different things so the objective might be um let me give you an example <clears throat> um okay so the objective let me give it an example in the career session so the objective of delivering career sessions we have the certain time we have um to deliver career readiness sessions to the trainees of 10 academy in this period of time and we have to do it this and that way it, that's what we want to achieve we just want to deliver the sessions in a certain amount of period of time but what are the expectations what are the expectations what are we trying to solve using career sessions what are we trying to achieve you know you you will find that uh most of the time as data engineers or you know machine learning engineers you will find that you are doing something for the company or even for the customers of the company you are trying to give them the service but understanding what they are trying to solve will help you so much. Will help you because you might even find out that some of the things, according because you are the one with the expertise, you might find out that some of the things are not involved in the project scope, but you know that they can help. So understanding the stakeholders' expectations 
it's the best thing. It's kind of the best way to go. Uh, so, and also other necessary information that are related with this project. Information uh, like we can even talk about more. Are there any, are there any, uh, was this, is this like the first time for this project is being run or are there any past documentations about the same previous project that we run that I can base on? Like there are so many things, other necessary information. So when to ask, it's important to ask in initial project meetings and also regular check-ins, especially when you are working with stakeholders like outside the company, it's better to not just text any question, but wait for the regular check-in meetings that happen probably on a weekly basis. Wait for that time and ask your questions, unless the question you have might be a blocker to what you have to do then you have like to make it like an urgent inquiry that way you can ask so some of the examples we have how frequently would you like to be updated would you like updates and what format will be most help useful to you how frequently would you like updates about the projects this is you asking anyone involved and then what format would be most useful to you we go ahead, how about you? What the next two questions would you ask in this scenario? <clears throat> okay, what is the timeline, scope and budget of the project? Great. Um, great, uh, th th that would work, Shamil, but also understanding the kind of context we have here it's assuming when you read that you are assigned to lead a project and it has various stakeholders and cross-functional team members involved. Um, then can I say you are assumed that you probably know much about the project because you are leading the project, let me think. Okay, Shamil. So, Sorry, since uh, this is the initial project, so and uh, I, maybe it's because the budget is not allocated. Maybe I just thought about that because you said it's in an initial project. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Then they are asking everything about the budget and the scope you have to work in and the timeline you have to follow. Everything makes sense. Super makes sense. Yes, Shamil? Uh, last asking the format in update because uh, it feels like it wasn't already standardized. Those are already not standardized. It seems like it's a new project. Yeah, it's a new project. Makes sense. Thank you for that. And also, Hilary said, what do you think are the challenges we might encounter during the project? That's absolutely great. Like having a conversation about the expectations, challenging expectations you might look forward to, that's something to discuss about so that everyone brings their idea of what they think. <clears throat> so scenario number four, this is then you are already in your work, but you know, you need support because you're overwhelmed. Like there is a lot of things, you know? So, Description, you find yourself overwhelmed with work and impacting, it's impacting your ability to meet deadlines and also to maintain quality of the things you are delivering. Type of questions, they should be direct and constructive. And what to consider is to clearly outline your current workload and specific areas where you need support. And then when to ask, as soon as you recognize the signs of being overloaded, as soon as you realize that you cannot do this by yourself. And also pre a brief before it impacts your performance, before you miss that deadline and they come after you because that will really increase the overwhelming you have. It will even be stressful. And also even asking support after you have failed, it looks like, it completely looks like you have failed. Like now you need support. So as a profession, it's always, great to admit that you need help there is someone who said it um 
during stand up was it sorry during cbs i don't know if it was michael or someone else but he said uh recently he he's proud that he's able to ask for help because before he did not so it's always better to ask for help before you fail something because that after that it will have another image so always much better before it impacts your performance so some of the examples given my current commitments i'm finding it challenging to meet all the times without compromising the quality can we discuss possible ways to redistribute some tasks probably to other team members so this is very it's kind of general but in when you are in a work setup it's better just to highlight exactly given these and that i have to do like a list of things you have to do and you have to mention them i'm really finding it difficult to meet the deadlines like you have to list them so that the person reading also have to see that you are actually overloaded you know and you have to tell them no that your main intention is not the fact that you cannot do this but just because you have tight deadlines and you have the quality you have to attain to so then you put here your requests can we discuss possible ways to redistribute some tasks there are other questions you can put here instead of redistributing some tasks so what do you think what other questions do you think you can ask in this situation anyone you can raise your hand or if you're typing in the chat box then i'm also keeping my eyes there you tell us when you need support at work you will always need support you will always need support. Okay, uh, I missed someone who raised the hand. Okay, Hilary. Uh, so let's say in a scenario that you found an obstacle, you could try saying, so I have this, I've encountered this obstacle and I've tried these ways. So I, are there any suggestions that you could help me on this? That's also super great. Thank you for raising that. Sometimes you might not be needing the support because you are overwhelmed, but also because the overwhelming, no, no, not because of the deadlines and quality, but also because, um, you know, you are overwhelmed because you are stuck, you know, at some point. That happens a lot of time, actually. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for sharing, Hilary. And then moving forward, curiosity-driven questions. This is where you are, you know, something came up or you have been curious about something in your company and you, are, you want to ask just for the sake of knowing, by the way, for just the sake of knowing or seeing if there is any idea you can share or anything. It's just, you are curious, you know? So let's imagine you are curious about the recent company developments, upcoming changes or new strategies discussed in a company meeting. So your type of question, they should be open-ended because you want to know. And also they should be for clarifying, or I mean, if it's not open-ended for you to get details, then they should be for clarifying if you understand something, if you understood it well or not. So what to consider? The relevancy, and you should show that you are engaged and shows that also you are engaged with the company's direction. Actually, this is a crucial thing. 
even to the companies that you are going to join, it's also good case practice I do myself uh, in different companies I join, if especially high level people from my manager to the directors, to the VPs, to the president of the company, to the CEOs, when they bring something new they are working on or something um, they need our ideas on, like they are planning to do this and that and they just announced it in, throughout the company, they announced it not because they could not get their ideas by themselves. These are like highly experienced people, but just to understand what you think. So always, always like be part of the first people to think quickly and ask some question. And these are really high, high kind of uh, high level experienced people. So this is why we should be also remembering the essence of this session, asking good questions. So you think quickly and be like, what kind of question can I ask? You know, what kind of question can I ask? That shows that you are interested in the company's direction. And it also makes you stand out. It makes you stand out. Even clarifying something, repeating what they said, but be like, but did you mean this? You know, they show that you are active. So it's all, people call it like workplace politics. I don't know if some days we can do a challenge on workplace politics because you will see that majority of the people who get hired or majority of the people who get promoted, they are not like they are the best performers, like they understand codes and what they have to do. No, it's because they understand the workplace politics. So part of the workplace politics is just show your genuine interest in what the company is doing. They will like you from there because it makes you stand out. And when you see it well, not so many people encourage themselves to speak. You can take it from different stand-ups we have done or even, uh, yeah, different stand-ups, like where you do not have to do, to say something that requires you to think. You are actually about to report. See how many people raise the, their hands. It's like five people out of 20 who have joined, but that makes you stand out. That makes your name be out there. So this is why like curiosity-driven question is always very, very important. Always ask for questions or make them clarify something. They will like you for that. I guess someday we will do like workplace politics. It's kind of interesting. It's also kind of weird to know that it exists, but you know, it's interesting on my side. And I believe you can also learn a thing or two. But let's continue for now. So when to ask, it should be majority of the time after announcements or during team meeting, meetings where such topics are discussed. They might announce it on Slack and you might not know um, like what exactly to ask, but you wait for the next team meeting when you have got your time to read through, to, uh, to know the kind of question you can ask, to know any idea you can provide, and then you share it in team meetings because those topics are absolutely going to be discussed again. So some of the examples, we can be like, um, can you elaborate on how new the new strategy will impact our department? Probably it was a new idea from the CEO and you want to know like, how does the machine learning team comes in? Of course, you, you completely understand where you might come in, but you wanted to hear from, you want to hear, you want to hear it from him. So could you elaborate on how the new strategy will impact our department? You know, what's going to be our role? Um, anything, anything. So how about you? If the company released new developments or they announced upcoming changes, or new strategies that are going to be implemented in the company, what other questions would you ask? What is the impact of X? Makes sense. But can you also give us like more details? What do you mean, Shamil, so that we do not imagine it in a different way? You can open your mic. Uh, okay. so. I mean, say, what are the uh, impacts of, for example, the 
what the CEO have been talking about. So uh, in terms of, for example, reaching new customers, like how many implementing this uh, current project or current development, how many people we are targeting, how many people we are going to be, for example, if it is a sales, how many people we are going to be selling. So it gives a sense of uh, like the direction, goal, purpose or achievement for the team and all of us, I guess. Absolutely, you are very right. You are very right. Like trying to ask the details about it. Very right. When there was always still time to ask, you have to go and ask. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's continue for now. Number six, which is the second to last, is when you need a leave. So we have basically so uh, when you get onboarded, you start to meet people, different people in different departments, in coffee chats, and then you are tasked on different projects, and then you get to, uh, what was the fifth one? Then you get to a point where you need support, then you get to a point where you are curious about different things, and now we are, you know, different scenarios that also happen when you need a leave. What do you say? This is when you need to request time off for vacation or for personal reasons or even for health issues. Like for women, like probably we need maternal leaves, anything concerning our health. So types of questions, they should be informative and they should be procedural. Like you are asking for procedures. You are informing them, asking for procedures. So what to be considered is you have to be clear about the dates and reasons for you to leave. And then, of course, again, the reasons for you to leave. It's always um, respectful, uh, like mentioning exactly why you are leaving. Even when it's kind of personal reasons and they cannot make sense, it's better you are there that it's because of personal reasons that, you know, you cannot share them. Just personal reasons. But always stay, do not be like, I need to leave at these dates. It's better to say, like, I need leave just because of this and that. Then when to ask in advance of the leave dates, much so much better if it's not something urgent or emergent, always ask in advance. And also during a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your manager. When you have to meet your manager, majority of the companies, managers, and their teammates meet on a weekly basis one-on-one -on -one meeting with the manager so in that meeting you can be able to tell him that not on slack not somewhere else if you have a, a platform where you book your leave there are companies like big companies where like leaves have to be booked and you know so that you do not collide with other um other colleagues who are all going out especially during christmas time new year time it's always like they have platforms for you to be able to see and judge if you also need a leave or if you can wait. So if you also have those kind of platforms, it's better to let your manager know or announce it way before, before you go there to book so that you can have a discussion about it prior. And then some of the examples of questions, I would be like, what is the procedure for submitting a leave request and how can I best prepare for my absence in terms of projects hand handover? Like, what are the procedures for submitting a leave request? Like, especially when you are new in the company, you haven't been introduced to those tools or those tools do not exist. Then you can ask who, like, what are the procedures? You want to understand who do you have to tell it and how? And also how best can you prepare your handover, what you were working on to the team? How does your manager want it to be transitioned to the team? At some point, they might not even want you to transition it to your team because you were the best on your projects and they would like to not disturb you in any way. So in this kind of context where you need to request a leave, what kind of other questions would you ask?
Yes, Sheila. Um, um, I think a question I would ask would be how long, okay, how long do I, like how long, wait, how long does it have to be before I actually request a leave? I don't know whether that makes sense. Like what's yes. the... Yes, yes. Yeah. It makes sense because uh, there are companies where you cannot, they have policies that if you are not like one year old in the company, then you cannot uh, you cannot ask for leave, especially like Arab co companies, you know, from Dubai, from Turkey, like they are very strict about it. You cannot request for a leave when you are not one year old in the company. Okay. Uh, yes, Wandera. Um, you could ask a question of. Um... Are there like are there are specific timelines within the year when one can can request for leave? Because I think some companies don't because if if everyone is requesting for leave anytime they want, but and the, and there's an ongoing project, it might disorganize the the running of the project. So probably I think they they have timelines when they can allow people to leave for projects. So a question like that. Absolutely, you are right. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, allow me one second. Yes, Martin, you were right. Like, uh, not everyone can just request leave as they want. So, yeah, that really makes sense. So, the next example is when then you feel like you need to move forward, you need to depart with the team, and you want to move forward with your other personal endeavors, and it's what we call resignation. Like, you are ready to move forward, you have to depart from the company. So, What's the description we have? This is when you decided to leave the company and needed to discuss your departure with the HR or even your manager. So the type of questions, they should also be informative and procedural. You want to inform them and you want to know the procedures. Number, what to consider is to be respectful and professional regardless of your reason of leaving. Some people might be leaving just because you're not happy with the company. I'm telling you, this happens, especially when you're not treated or you are not, you did not enjoy working with people you were working with. So instead of mentioning anything, anything aside from um, anything that might not sound professional or respectful, it's better just to keep it, your feelings away from it. So always be respectful and professional. Then when to ask is during your resignation meeting with your manager or if you do not have to meet your manager and you have to meet the HR. So this is some of also um, the questions you can ask. Like what are the steps I need to follow to ensure a smooth handover of my responsibilities? Because you have already submitted your resignation. Most of the time they won't ask you like why, why, like try to go into details. Uh, you know, unless like they do not really, really understand, but um, you know, some of, straight to the questions. One of the things you can ask, you just like, so I'm going. Then what are the steps I need to follow to ensure a smooth handover of my responsibilities? So yeah, when if it was you and you departing ways with another company with your company, what questions then would you ask? Anyone? 
Anyone on the resignation? Okay, for me, some of the other question I, I would be like, um, is there any exit interviews? Some companies do that, where you have to share like uh, your feedback and if it can be most helpful. So I can ask like, uh, is there an exit interview and how can my feedback be more helpful? And then also, um, what else can I ask? I can ask about things that are related with non-disclosure agreements or non, uh, some people do like non-compete agreements, especially to high level management positions. Uh, so where you are not allowed to go in a competitor company in a certain amount of days, like six months, one year, like you have to sign that. So it's better to also ask so that nothing gets imposed, imposed on you in the future. So asking if there is any continuous obligations or non-disclosure agreements or non-competition agreements that you need to be aware of post-resignation. Yeah, non-competitive non agreements, they are sent by high level kind of employees, but also the non-disclosure one is signed by almost every employee. Like you will not disclose everything we had to, we were planning to work on or what you were doing in our company. You will not disclose it anywhere or to anyone. So yeah. In tech companies, most of the time, because ideas can be stolen and implemented very, very easily and very quickly, they make you sign non-disclosure agreements. So, yep. Then um, Enoch said, ask for recommendation. That's a good one, absolutely. Especially when you had good relationships with your teammates, with your manager, it's always great to ask for recommendations. They can put it on LinkedIn. That will be super great. Uh, yeah, just actually for public figures. So these are the seven scenarios that makes up your employee journey in a certain company. So you should, we should always remember that questions always aren't just about getting answers, but about understanding deeper issues, unlocking new opportunities, and collaborating more effectively. These are like the very top three should be the very top three reasons for you asking different questions. So let's have a look at the challenge. The challenge is kind of a bit about with the scenarios that we had, that we were talking about. So we can go ahead and first talk about uh, the introduction. The introduction we have is more about understanding how to ask the right question is crucial in any professional setting. And this skill will enhance your ability to gather essential information solve problems effectively and engage meaningfully with colleagues and stakeholders. The right question often is not, far, is not about finding the direct answer, but about exploring possibilities and understanding deeper undercurrents of business operations. So, yep, and then in this challenge, you will analyze the given various workplace scenarios and decide whether further questions are needed. If questions is required, you must, formulate specific strategic question that would be appropriate to ask in each situation. So let me show you what uh, we already have, the goal, the objective, and then we have the instructions. Let's go straight to the instructions. The scenarios below are made of scenarios where you need to ask further questions to understand the situation and action that needs to be taken. Like, you can read the scenario and be like, this is not enough for me to take action. And then you have some of the questions to ask. Or some of the scenarios also may be curious to know, uh, where you may be curious to know more, even though there are no any actions that needs to be taken. And also we have scenarios where information given are satisfying and you don't need to ask any further question. So we just have to understand the scenario. I will give you an example for you to understand, uh, for instance, where you do not like feel like you cannot ask any questions. There are informations that can be posted by other departments. 
you know, and you feel like they were just for informing you. Just informing you. It will not impact your work. It will not impact you personally. It will not impact your uh, department in any way. Then in that case, you just read the announcement, you read the information that is put out there, and you continue working. You know, you can put there an emoji of recognized, and that is it, and then you leave it there. So it's up for you to judge. Among um, the scenarios we have here, we have 10 scenarios. You just read and be like, so this question belongs in this category. Is it a category where I have to ask questions, where I am curious to know more, and I have to also put there some questions, like curiosity questions, and also are these questions where I'm feeling like, you know, there is nothing to ask. So what is the main task? It's just one task. For each scenario provided below, answer the following. Determine whether further questions needs to be asked to better understand the situation and assist in decision making or to satisfy your curiosity or not. It's three categories. So each scenario has to be in one of, one of these categories. So if you decide that no further questions are needed, you give us three reasons why. Why do you believe you do not need further to ask further questions on this scenario? You tell us why. Just from the example I gave you on the department, I posted something that would not impact you. Like, tell us. I felt like this will not impact my work. Like, any reason you can share. And also, if you decided that the further action questions or curiosity questions are needed, then you write down five specific questions you would like to ask on that scenario. Five specific questions on that scenario. Aim to formulate questions that are clear, purposeful, and relevant to the context. And let me repeat this a bit more. If you decide uh, that further questions Further action questions or curiosity questions where you find questions where you need to ask more details for you to be able to take actions, you give us five questions you, you will be asking. And also when you read a scenario and be like, actually, this is out of my scope of work, but I'm curious to know more. And you also give us five more specific questions you will ask. So let's look together on scenario number one. During a team meeting, it is announced your objective to, is to enhance the performance of an existing machine learning model. The meeting ended with the team discussion only focusing on general goals for improving model operations within the next quarter. This is the only information you have. So it's up to you for you to judge. Is this a question where you can ask question? Is, it, is this a curiosity question? Or do you feel like this is everything you need to be able to start working on the objective or of the task you have? Number two, the HR department sends out a memo detailing a new company policy on remote work, which includes eligibility criteria, steps for applications, applica applying in that company, and then tools provided by the company, expectations for remote workers, and resources for technical support. The memo is thorough and includes FAQ sections that addresses common queries or concerns you might have. So looking at this, do you feel like this is a question where you need to ask more questions? Do you feel like this is a question outside your scope of work and you're curious to know more? Or do you feel like actually this is enough and you do not have to ask anything? You know, because also we did not, we did not talk, it, talk about it in the tutorial, but it's not okay just to talk about anything in the company when you feel like it's just information. For instance, I will give you an example. When the finance team announces like, hello everyone, we are on 25th of May, everyone send your invoices to the company email, send in your invoices to be paid, you, to get your salary. Then, you know, do you ask any questions? Do you feel like most of the time when they say that, you already have the format. Don't even say, oh, I have the form, I need the format of the invoice or anything. Uh, even when your, um, how do you call it? Even when they haven't shared, as a profession, you should be able to decide your own invoice because you are working for money. 
So what questions? Do you just react, I'm sending it, or do you ask questions? There are scenarios where you are not expected to ask questions. Like that finance scenario, you are not expected to ask questions. So even here, be reading through and understand everything. Do you need to ask questions or not? Or do you need to ask curiosity questions? And then number three, uh, your team receives an email about upcoming IT maintenance that will affect several systems you use regularly. The emails list the systems, but does not mention the duration of the downtime or the other necessary information. I think some of the questions are kind of very obvious. Then uh, some of the scenarios, sorry. Then number four, you are assigned to integrate a new natural language processing model, uh, sorry, feature into an existing application. The project brief describes the end goals for the user interaction improvements and the next data analysis capabilities through NLP features. Yep, so it's up to you for you also to decide. Are you able to move forward with what you have now? Are there questions you have to ask? Or is this something that is not related with you? With you as a data engineer, machine learning engineer, joint AI engineer in that company. Scenario number five, you are given access to a well-documented API for machine learning model, including detailed, detailed, usage examples, a list of endpoints, expected inputs, outputs, format, and also error handling instructions. They give you instructions on how you handle errors. The documentation also includes change log with updates from the previous version. So with the information you have, you know, um, do you feel like you have to proceed? Or do you feel like there are different questions you can ask? I Last week, we did much more about APIs and everything. So I believe that is easy to understand. Scenario number six, the project lead shares a detailed plan for deploying new data pipeline. The plan includes a timeline, resource allocation, tools to be used, step-by-step -step guide on deploy, deployment process, Additionally, there is support contact list and troubleshooting section addressing common issues from the past deployments. It's also up to you for you to decide which category this question belongs in and what do you have to do. Scenario number seven, on your first day, you are given rapid tour of the office and briefly introduced to the different digital tools and platforms that the company uses each with distinct roles in operations, communications, and project management. Your orientation session includes a quick overview of each tool by various team members, but it lacks depth in training, depth training or guidance on how to effectively use these tools in your specific role. You are expected to start working on the projects from the very next day, which involves interacting with many of these platforms. So what do you do here? Scenario number eight, you are tasked with organizing a small departmental conference in your data engineering department. You are supposed to be the one to run the conference. The administration has provided you with a conference plan because you know managing conference is not your department. You are just a data engineer. You are gen AI, machine learning. So you don't know much about conferences and stuff. So they provided you with conference plan, session plan, timelines, clear budgets, a list of preferred vendors for catering and equipment, past event feedback to guide your planning, and a checklist of logistical steps to follow, approved by the previous event coordinators. So you also put this in the category you want. And then number nine, you are deeply involved in several critical tasks, rolling out new software system, updating major tools, organizing a company-wide session on data securing, finalizing quarterly performance report and overseeing the integration of a newly acquired company's technology into existing system. With each project demanding thorough attention and varying skills from technical knowledge to project management, the combined pressure is immense 
So recognizing the need to maintain high standard of work, you are considering best approach to seek additional help. So this is obvious. You decide. <coughs> Sorry. And then 10, the company has just announced that it will be buying an, uh, another company to become bigger. This is what we call acquisition of companies. So they decided to be buying um, a bigger company for them to become bigger and offer more products. And when, when one company buys another, they usually have to combine their teams and figure the best way together. This process can affect many parts of the company from the jobs people do to the opportunities that might come up. During a brief meeting, the leaders explained that this acquisition means our company will have more employees and broader range of product. They talked about how this would help to complete, help us to compete better, to compete better in the market. So yeah, so it's also for you to check and decide what you have to do. So make a PT in the submission, make a PowerPoint or Google Slides with 12 slides maximum and convert it to PDF and then submit on tents. So why are we doing this? It's for you, us to practice when we get into the work environment, uh, the best way to ask questions, the best way to be curious and ask curiosity questions, and also to know when to not talk. Like you feel like this is now for me, it's satisfying. Let me go ahead and continue my work or let me go ahead and work on it. So that's basically like the, the main um, essence of all the scenarios we have here. Yeah, that is it. Any questions before we close? Any questions? If there is no question, then I would appreciate some reactions. Okay, thank you, Shamil. Okay, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. So, yeah, have a great day moving forward. And for any questions, you can ask on Slack. We are there to help. Thank you for joining.